Offer me money. All that I have and more. Please. Offer me everything I ask for. Anything you want. I want my father back, you son of a bitch. What's up, folks? Mike for CMCC Builds, back with a quick one. Another five-minute build where we create a character in... Less than five minutes. Today, we're tackling the classic flamboyant and romantic swordsman, the Swashbuckler. This also happens to be the channel's first optimized rogue build. The last five minute build was a barbarian and now a rogue. You may know how I feel about those two classes, but I think with the last build and this one, we'll see that we can make fun characters that may not be off the charts powerful, but can still contribute in optimized parties. This build will take advantage of the rogue's superior movement capabilities to maximize its one attack damage while doing what every single rogue should try to do, get off turn attacks as often as possible to trigger sneak attack more than once per round. This character finishes with four consistent and complementary methods to do just that. Quick housekeeping note, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, Patreon link below for cool perks, you know the drill. All right, all right. Let's get rocking! There's a version of this build that I may tackle in the future that takes an elf, elven accuracy, and arcane trickster instead of swashbuckler, but for this particular build we want a feat right at level 1, so we're gonna go with custom lineage. Variant human is a strong pick, but I like getting dark vision on a character that will likely have scouting duty, and the odd primary ability score means we can take advantage of the solid half feats. For size, I'm going with small, again, just to get that roguish scout feel. If you need to squeeze into small spaces, now you can. For the feat, take magic initiative wizard. Booming Blade is a primary tool of this build, and as such is a mandatory pickup. For the second cantrip, Green Flame Blade is a solid choice among others, but I'm going with Minor Illusion. Once again, you're a rogue. Being able to toss out distractions for guards and sentries is befitting of the sneakier types. And with a single level 1 spell, grab Find Familiar. It has no duration, fantastic for a single use spell, and with an owl, you can get advantage on a single attack per turn. Not great for a blade singer or a fighter, but excellent for a rogue that often gets one attack per turn, and really, really needs that attack to land. The familiar can also scout with the best of them, improve action economy in combat, and many other fantastic uses that are out of scope of this video. With the variable trait, dark vision. Again, if you're gonna scout or sneak, not having a giant spotlight on you makes things much easier. Set yourself up for success. Ability scores, 8 Strength, 15 Dexterity, 14 Constitution, 8 Intelligence, 10 Wisdom, 15 Charisma. There is wiggle room here if you wanted to drop Charisma to increase Con or Wisdom. With your Racial ASI, increase Dexterity to a 17. For your background, go Custom Background and take Sleight of Hand and Persuasion. You're a Charismatic Rogue, so make use of that High Dex and Solid Charisma score. Take whatever language and tool works for your party, campaign, or character concept. For equipment, you'll want a rapier, a shield, either studded leather or a chain shirt, which both give a 15 AC right now. Eventually, you'll want a breastplate until level 9, where studded leather's 17 AC will bypass the breastplate 16. You also have a shield for plus 2 AC, incredibly important on a melee build like this, but be aware that ranged combat will be tricky because you can't just drop your shield as a free action, so choose your ranged options wisely. With your starting class, choose fighter. Proficiencies take the ever important perception along with another charisma based skill, intimidation. With the fighting style, I've seen people take dueling on builds like this. Dueling works best on builds with lots of attacks. This does not have that. You're a D8 hit die character for the most part. Take defense to make sure you can live. Dying is bad. At level 2, you're now taking rogue levels. With the proficiency, take stealth. With expertise, perception and stealth. Two of the most important skills in the game. You're now a sneaky boy. You can spot most threats. Here you get sneak attack, the rogue's primary feature. Like I said, you're going to do what every good rogue should aim to do and get as many sneak attacks per round as possible. At 3, rogue 2, cunning action is great, but we'll find less use because at 3, we're taking the swashbuckler, who gets fancy footwork that allows the rogue to move out of range of an enemy they have melee attacked without fear of the opportunity attack reprisal. It's not quite as good as cunning action's disengage feature, but it doesn't cost a bonus action, and that isn't a small cost. Why is this important? Because it combos with booming blade in the best of ways. You're going to booming blade your enemy, hitting them with sneak attack and the booming energy for a ton of damage dice depending on your level you then move away without them getting opportunity attack and then they have to decide to stay put or move to attack you and take even more damage because booming blade is a spell and not an attack action you can't dual wield to use your bonus action attack unfortunately but we'll find a decent use of that ba later Rakish Audacity gives it an initiative bonus based on Charisma modifier, which will eventually be a plus three, and the ability to use sneak attack without advantage. Once again, we need to get sneak attack as often as possible. This shores that up a bit in case steady aim, a nearby ally, or a familiar isn't an option. 
At 5, Rogue 4 take the Piercer feat to round up Dex and add some more damage. With Sneak Attack on nearly every hit, you'll have plenty of opportunities to earn 1s into 3.5s, which is a nice little damage boost along with the extra crit die. Here, we're going to go back into Fighter for 2 levels. We get Action Surge, which usually works fantastic with builds that have plenty of attacks or casters that want to get multiple spells off in a turn, but it actually synergizes well with Rogues, who can use that Surge to 1, ensure that you get Sneak Attack on a turn where you fail to hit, and 2, ready your second action for an off turn attack, which will trigger a second sneak attack. We'll have plenty of other ways to garner those off turn attacks though. Level 7, Fighter 3, we're going to take Battlemaster as the martial archetype. The maneuver options are simply too good to pass up. First, Precision Attack. You need to hit as frequently as possible. This isn't a build with 4 or 5 solid attacks. You get one big one. Precision Attack gets you that extra 4.5 on an attack roll when you need it. And then we'll take Brace and Repost. Why? Because these both allow you to make off turn attacks. Someone moves into your reach, Brace for a massive sneak attack hit. That doesn't require advantage or an ally nearby to trigger sneak attack because of rakish audacity. Repost allows you to take a melee attack when a creature attacks and misses you. With a 19 AC, that should happen often enough. You now have four solid means to procure off turn attacks. Opportunity attacks, ready to action surge attack, enemy enters reach, and an enemy misses you. That will increase. Back to Rogue, level 9, take Expertise and Persuasion and Thieves Tool or Sleight of Hand. At Rogue 8, max Dexterity and switch to Studded Leather. 9 gives you Panache for some tanky abilities. At Rogue 10, level 13, take the Telekinetic Feat to bump Charisma to 16. I like this over something like Fey Touch because it allows you to move enemies as a bonus action, but more importantly, you can move allies. Booming Blade and enemy, move away, but if you have an ally engage with that enemy, your strategy sucks. They just attack that enemy instead of moving. If both of you move on your turn, then the enemy has a very tough decision to make, and you often like either one. Rogue 12, lucky to make sure you always hit, and for whatever else you need to reroll. Slippery Mind gives proficiency in wisdom saves, which is great, and at 16 takes Sentinel, so now you can get off turn attacks when your nearby allies are attacked. And finally, Master Duelist to make sure you pretty much just can't miss. Between this, Lucky, Precision Attack, your familiar, and Steady Aim, there really is no reason to ever miss an on turn attack. Okay folks, that's the build. Get in, do a ton of damage, get out, and look good doing it. See you here next time.